welcome to organic chemistry. I'm going to retire the joke. Okay. We are here for brand story development workshop with word girl. That's what I call her. Um, and if you have little, um, toddlers, you might remember the show a word world. So when I see Elizabeth, I hear word girl to the tune of word world, which is featured on PBS. Sorry, Elizabeth. There was also a world girl cartoon who had a crazy pet parrot or no monkey. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> so we're here for Brand Story Development Workshop. And Elizabeth, if you could go to the next slide, we'll do the oath. I, Tiffany Joy Green, do solemnly swear to accept the lifelong obligation to hone my superhero powers and apply those superhero powers to the good of the people I serve. I will promote and add to the ongoing success of Empower People, its members, and the people, organizations, and communities it serves. I will help repair the next generation of superheroes. I am driven to be a positive change agent for those I serve and interact with. So without further ado, let's give the baton to Word Girl. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at the... It's telling me my next slide is different than what, okay, it's fine. Um, so I thought this came after the who am I one, but that's okay. So here, um, what we're hoping to learn today is just some tenets about good marketing and brand development. And, that, and so you're going to learn that what makes for a good human makes for good marketing. We're going to take a look at some um, sites that aren't doing well. So you can learn why your current marketing efforts may be falling flat. We're going to visit what your mission, vision, and values are and what the benefits you offer are because those are all components of good marketing. And who am I? I am Elizabeth E.J. Phillips. Um, I am the founder and chief marketing officer of E.J. Creates Consulting. I am the marketing manager for proactive information management here in Midlothian, Virginia. I am a member of James River Writers. I am an artist and I am a corporate storyteller and a mom of four teenagers. So send wine. Um, but our first one is on being a good human. And up here, I have just pictures of some every personal development book that I could think of. Well, not there are more than this, but um, just some standard ones. And I wanted to know, and y'all can turn off your mutes and say, what do you think? What do you think these books have in common? Like the gist of their messaging. Don't be an a-hole. I was told we could not cuss. Um. <laughs> I think um, building strong relationships, showing up vulnerable. I think Dar seeing Daring Greatly um, right there. I think that's a big, big part of that. It very much is. And um, a lot of what is available out there for personal development, my sort of theory thesis is that the, pick one up because clearly you look at the world, we all need some personal development, but they're kind of all the same. They're all the same message. And I believe that the message is, and y'all are both on track, that it's not about you. Don't be a jerk. Um, and that is, that is what makes for good marketing too. Anytime you're talking to a business, we have all come in contact with a salesperson at a networking event or just out or someone trying to sell us something. And, that, and we feel exactly like that. We feel like someone's trying to sell us something. They're not listening. And that doesn't necessarily, um, help us. We may not be buying what they're selling. They're also not listening to us. So good marketing is one that looks at what their target market is wanting. What are those pain points? I, I don't like using sort of corporate lingo, but this one is an accurate one as well. Um, and so it all falls down to those the same tenets we learned from um, Brene Brown or from the Bible, that it's not about you. It really is about other people. And you know, Leanne, like you said, it's about relationships. And don't be a jerk, Tiffany, you were right. I just said it more politely for the first time ever. Um, I just have to say, I did not swear. I abbreviated. Fair, 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 fair. 
Um, and so we're going to take a look at that at, after this is our premise for how we're going to enter into marketing, how we're going to enter into all of our messaging. We're going to ask some questions about why what you're doing now may not be getting you the results you want. Um, I'm clicking. Okay. Um, your current marketing efforts may not be, um, may be falling flat because you're relying on the standard of who you are, what you do, and where you do at model of branding. We've all been told, like, if you meet someone at an event, they're going to ask who you are, what you do. You know, my name is Elizabeth Phillips. I'm the marketing manager for active information management, and we work in tech, something like that. And you do need to mention those things for SEO. That is, if you're writing on your website, you absolutely, for SEO purposes, need to say who you are, where, what you do, and where you're doing it so people can find you. Um, but it's not answering the question, how do you help someone else? How does this help me? How does what you do help me as a consumer? And most people, they want to know one of three things. Like, how, how do you make them money? How do you make them skinny? How do you save them time? How do you make their children obey? This is, these are like the basic questions. And it's, I kind of think it's almost the opposite of what President Kennedy told us, you know, ask not what you can do for your, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. No, we, this is, tell not what your company does, but tell it how it makes my life better. I want to see it quickly. I want to see it easily. Um, when thinking in particular about a website, if um, someone, if a user comes to your website, don't make them have to work for it. Spoon feed them how you help them because they're obviously there to get help. So we're going to take a peek at some very random businesses I Googled in my hometown. So I wouldn't be, um, you know, pointing fingers at anyone here in Richmond. I decided to do that in my hometown because I don't live there anymore. Um, so we're going to take a peek. This is, um, I Googled, this was the top Google ad. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, how big. A top Google ad for an IT company in Greensboro, North, North Carolina. And I specify that it's the top Google ad because they're clearly paying for some Google ad space. They're paying a marketing firm to help them. They are spending money on this. But when I get to this website, irrespective of the design problems, um, I want to know, if, can anyone tell me how they make my life easier, what sets this person apart, what what they do at a glance. I'm seeing some head shaking. No, you have to dig for it. The difference of strategy plus execution. Okay, people really love, I know Tiffany loves the word strategy. I love the word strategy, but also sometimes it's used so often that I don't know what that means. Um, I also don't know, really know how that helps me. Um, it's a bit like saying a, a politician saying this is for the children. Well, are there candidates who are against the children? I, I don't know what this. OK, yeah, I, I don't know who, what this means. Um, so over here in very tiny font, um, it says combining the insights of a traditional consulting firm with the ability to execute complex infrastructure solutions at scale globally. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer. Those are some big words, but now I know we've got a consulting firm and the ability to execute complex solutions. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, wait, if we read, which I mean, I, I like to read, but not websites. It tells me that it delivers tangible business outcomes faster. Okay, now that helps me. That helps a business. Tangible business outcomes faster. That should be in a big, bold font. Very easy to find. Not having to dig through paragraphs of corporate jargon. Oh, and here's another one. It saves me time and money. I like those things. And it ensures the right outcomes for your business. So these two things in yellow, these are our benefits. Do not make your target market, dig through three paragraphs to find it. Make that part easy for them. They're all, they, we 
all have very short attention spans. And so we want to make it as easy. Don't make them wait, burn calories to find out what you do. The next one we're going to look at, um, we're going to make sure this, it's going to also show, um, it's a different type of company we're looking at. Hi, Christina. Um, and we're going to look at their website and see if we can figure out what sets them apart and what I could expect with engaging with them. What are the benefits that they could bring me as their market? anyone brave enough and want to see if they can figure out what they do quickly? I mean, they do business coaching. Do you know what that means? Mm, I a one on one something. So they say, practice self-awareness, set smarter goals, take control of your brain's innate abilities. So they're, like, like Leanne said, they do business coaching services. I don't have a problem with business coaches. I have friends who are business coaches. I utilize, I've utilized a business coach. They do, however, business coach, that's like saying business, 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 or the kid who says, my dad works in an office. Are they a business coach? Having that is their main tagline. Are they a business coach that specializes in human resources? Are they a business coach that specializes in um, financial planning? Are there, Yes, ma'am. My question is, I would assume that I'd be a target market. Are you coaching me? Because that's the brain. Are you coaching my business? Because the business coaching makes me think I'm, you're focusing on my business, not me. But you're saying you're utilizing your brain to maximize. So I'm very confused about who really are you helping, me or the business? Yeah, correct. Now, it's fine if in their Google business profile, because it's very limiting and what you can choose is your descriptor. If the best descriptor is business coaching services. But this company, if you see here, helps, me pra helps you practice self-awareness, set smarter goals, and take control of your brain's innate abilities. This is personal development. This is, it's definitely got a human resource flavor. Um, people probably hire them to come in and do a day's worth of workshop. But if I'm wanting uh, like a consultant or someone to help me with my business coach, this is probably not the person. So they've paid to get an ad, but have not paid to look at their messaging. Because when I get here to their website, I, I've probably come looking for the wrong thing. So I'm going to leave quickly um, or I, I have to dig through it. And if I have to work this hard to get at the meat, I want it in a taco, not on a website. Um, so we've, we've discussed some places where they went wrong. And they forgot every single personal development book that we talked about before says, it's not about you, don't, don't be a jerk. They talked about themselves. We had to dig through to find the benefits that it was saving us time, accessing parts of our brain or what, you know, other those, that increasing our efficiency. We had to dig to find those. Um, don't make, set the expectation that your clients are going to have an easier the experience of working with you is going to be enjoyable from start to finish. And that that engagement starts when they open your website, when they look at your one pager. If you're in an in-person networking event and you have, you know, a one pager or you have like one of those like postcard things that you hand out, the messaging can be across the board easy. Um, so, and you want to... Um, Start, you want to try to tell a story. Some of it's because my background's in writing and also I'm an artist. I believe that people are motivated by stories more than they are motivated by products. And um, so you want to tell them a story where they are the hero. They get, 
I may be the only person who has already cast the made for um, TV lifetime movie of my life. Um, but I bet there are other people on this planet that think of, that are more concerned with themselves than you and your business. Um, so you want to set them up to be the hero and you are the guy in the chair. You are the Yoda to their Luke, the Alfred to their Batman, the Mr. Miyagi to their Daniel son. Um, and so, and I just asked the question, you know, would you rather read a textbook or a story? Some industries, this is more important than others. Um, you know, for my W-2, my day job, I work in a tech company. I don't know if you know this, that stuff's super boring, real boring, real, real boring. Um, so, so people don't want to hear about the minutia. Um, you know, if, most of us here are working in, I know, Leanne, you work in an educational um, environment. So your target market is parent. I'm assuming it's parents, it's teachers, it's constituents, it's students. And so how actually, you engage them. I was going to say, mine's a little bit different because my target market is actually all of our staff across the state. So it's a little bit different in how I have to think about it. That's their target market, who they're mm -hmm. working with. But because I convene the network, um, my target market is a little bit different. And one of your struggles, and I, I'm guessing, done no research, but you have the pros and cons of a target market that's forced to listen to you. Like they're yes. sad. And if they they're not forced to, to, they feel like that. <laughs> right. Like they, they have to show up and engage with your content, whether they want to or not. However, also have a master's in education. You engage with content. You process more. You learn more if you enjoy it. If mm -hmm. it's, if you can see the value, mm -hmm. if you, then it's not, oh, we have another webinar with Leanne. It's, oh, we have another little webinar with Leanne. And I heard these two things from her last week and then put them into practice and I can meet, hey, maybe they're probably not immediately seeing the benefits, but they can see how they're going to bear their fruit. You're working in education. You're, there are chill, they are teaching children. It's not necessarily immediate benefits, but they're going to be, they can see why it's useful. And so that's what you want to do. And, um, using a story and um, just to give some very classic examples of stories that we all bought um, in 1971, Coca-Cola, have you ever noticed that Coca-Cola never describes what its actual product is? It doesn't say brown fizzy liquid with notes of, I mean, I don't even know how you would describe what Coke tastes like. It doesn't tell you that. It doesn't tell you it's healthy, none of that stuff. It, you know, it, it sells community, whether it's teaching the world to sing or have a Coke with Tiffany and it's got her name on the side. They are selling relationship. They are selling community. They are selling a feeling. Um, Apple, one, once upon a time, my first iPod is in fact in the Smithsonian as an example, but they were trying to sell a thousand songs in your pocket. They were selling freedom. They were selling music. Um, they were selling rock and roll and I want rock and roll. There was a little misstep with Bono when they tried to do that, but that's okay. Um, but they were selling freedom. And why is this? Why does this work better than describing brown fizzy liquid? Um, we process stories, information through stories, images and words put together take us from one place to another. And our favorite stories are about ourselves. Open so open Facebook, open TikTok, if you would like proof of that. Um, it's not just Gen Z and G Gen A that are concerned about themselves. They learned that from somewhere. Um, and so if you were wanting to sell to people, you have to move them. You have to cause an emotional reaction and um, data, and I'll, I'm, this portion is just for Tiffany, data and statistics do matter. Your numbers do matter. And they can support your story. But only insofar as they underscore the emotional undercurrent of the story. They support, it's one of the things I loved about um, why I wanted to be an English major in college is I learned that you can say anything you want as long as you back it up. 
as long as you have something that can prove your point. And that's um, what, you know, what we're here for. And um, one of the questions I get a lot is how do you know what story to tell? That And so, um, you know, empower people is one is wanting to help um, purpose driven organizations and people. And so every story has to have a beginning and that is going to start with your mission, vision, and values, because you can't just, you don't know how you can help people if you don't know who you are. Um, and so you need, getting back to these things, if you don't know your company's purpose, I know, Leanne, you're in a little bit, you're in a weird space um, because your purpose is different than the larger purpose of, um, it, it's it's that the government or a county you're working for? I don't really understand. No, it's a it's a national nonprofit and we're a state office and then we have local affiliates. Um, okay. So, yeah, you're exactly right. Like we have this we have this broader, um, you know, mission to keep kids in school and make sure that they achieve in life and, and all of that. Um, but I support the workforce. And so that's a little bit different because we're driving at that mission from supporting the folks who are who are driving the mission, you know. But you're non, I would still argue that your um, nonprofits mission, vision, and values still have to be applicable to you. You still have to demonstrate that the whole purpose, the reason why you have that job mm -hmm. is that mission, vision, and values. And so if that's not narrowed down, you're not going to be able to act. Um, and so being able to define those things um, is really helpful. Part of the reason why I sort of switched up um, why I wanted to do this talk is because recently I was working with a client and they we were revamping their branding, revamping their website, revamping everything. And um, I was like, well, I need your business plan. I need your mission, vision, and values. And they're like, we just want to sell this. And these are, I'm like, that's that's not a mission. It's not a vision. And those aren't value. Affordabil affordabil affordability is not a value you're going to, I mean, it is a value, but it's not, it's not how you want to define your staff. I don't want to, I don't want to work with a company that just employs cheap people, you know, it doesn't pay their, you know, so um, you have to really think about that. And so as you come to that, what is your company's purpose and what are your mission, vision, and values? And a great mission statement combines physical, emotional, and logical elements into one exceptional customer and employee experience that all stakeholders, no matter your investors, your employees, your clients, your prospects can engage with. It not only explains what you do, but it fosters that connection with your target audience. Remember our, our how to be a good human and how to be a good marketer are the same. It's not about you, don't be a jerk. So when your brand creates connection, they create loyalty and trust, which, as it actually turns out, increases profitability. Um, and a good mission statement has three parts. Um, your brand purpose. Um, your brand purpose, what does your product or service do or aim to offer and for whom? What does your com your brand values? What does your company stand for? Do you value inclusivity? Do you value commitment to, you know, attention to de detail? If I have an accountant, I really hope he values attention to detail. Do you value, I saw a company the other day that one of their values was that they eat their own dog food, um, that they follow their own rules. And I was like, that actually, it's quirky and it tells me a little bit about what their company culture is like, but that makes sense to me. Um, you know, a lot of companies now, I know that there's a marketing um, firm here in Richmond um, that one of their values is environmentally sustainability environmental sustainability. 
um, in creating more sustainable solutions. Um, that tells me a lot about that company as well. So the values are part of what will make your company unique. They also, they also should be how you hire people and how you also choose your clients. Um, because I, I know as a small business owner or working with a nonprofit, sometimes you are tempted to engage with, I mean, you're wanting to grow, you're wanting to create money, you're tempted you're tempted to engage with a client that's not a good fit because you just want the, you want the job, you want the gig. Um, and I have never seen that work out well um, because you're not enjoying engaging with that client. And so every hour you're spending with that client is costing you um, and it takes more time to work with them. So I just always say like brand values are also should be how you um, look at what clients you engage with. Um, and what are your brand goals? What does your company hope to accomplish for customers? Why should they work with you versus your competitors? Leanne, you you got this. You, you, they have to. They have to show up for you. They have to work with you. There is no co competition. So you got you got that one good. But why would they? Why are they going to see the value in you? That should I would say that would be one of your goals. Um, one question I get a lot is. What is the difference between a vision statement and a mission statement? You know, there and there is a difference. Um, mission statements are based in the present. They convey to stakeholders and community members why the business exists and where it currently stands. Vision statements are, are future-based. They're often very lofty, kind of cheesy sometimes, but they're meant to inspire and give direction. Um, they are a written declaration, clarifying your business's meaning and purpose, especially team members. This is sort of the Jerry Maguire. You remember he wrote that treatise? I haven't even seen that movie in a long time. But no, this isn't the show me the money. But he writes that treatise and he leaves and the girl leaves with him. Um, probably should have researched that before I thought of mentioning it. Um, but it, your, your written, your vision statement is, it describes the long-term results of your company's efforts. Um, for example, now this one I did research. This is true. This is accurate. For example, an early Microsoft vision statement was a computer on every desk and in every home. When they wrote that, now I'm like, Oh, that's kind of, I've got a computer in my back pocket and one, you know, I've got 47 computers. Um, but when they wrote that, that was bold, that was lofty. And that's much more exciting than a vision statement that says selling business software. Because again, technology is boring. Um, you know, but a vision statement can and should be lofty, inspirational. And it's important because it can be the common goal for everyone in the company. Um, your values. Tiffany, you look like you have a question or is that just your face? I was yawning and that's not boredom. Okay. It's just the change in season. So it's a, it's a yawn is a crave for oxygen. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um, th but your values will define how you do what you do and you an important thing to remember when you do this is you want to keep it short, make it easy for your employees to memorize and epitomize. This is We're talking bullet points here, people. Um, stay specific. They need to tie specifically to your company's mission and vision. They're going to address your internal and your external goals. So you can leave your fe employees feeling hopeful and inspire trust. And you want to make them unique. Concentrate on unique company aspects to attract the right customers and the right employees. Uh, like I always see on job things, fast paced environment. That tells me that I'm going to be overworked. <laughs> that tells me they, they have a shoestring budget and they're only going to have two employees and I'm going to be doing everything. I would like a regular paced environment. Um, haven't found one yet. Um, but why does this matter? Um, your mission, vision, and values, the foundation of your brand story. They define the characters, the plot, and the direction. They outline the benefits you offer your target market. 
If you're struggling to figure that out, get back to basics. What if Microsoft's old vision had been to sell software, to create software that helped businesses? That is what they did and what they do. Would any of us care? Would I follow, y'all, I follow a channel on TikTok and Instagram that all it is is a content creator acting like different Microsoft products talking to one another. It is hysterical. It's it's one of the best accounts. It's called This Is Shetty and S-H-E-T-T-Y. It is hysterical. And, but if Microsoft had defined something else, I can guarantee you This Is Shetty would not exist. And now they have content creators selling, you know, most of the time he's making fun of their products, but that's still selling because we all know. Um, you know, um, in summary, when you're setting up your brand story, center, think about who you're reaching, thinking about who you're talking to and center them. Clearly define for them easily what the benefits you could provide them to be. Um, Show them, tell them um, what the benefits are and tell them how you're going to help them, feed them, make them rich, make them skinny, make their students work better. Um, just how the, how you're going to solve their problem. And if you don't know what their problem is or how to do it, then you, once again, you're in a loop. You're going to go back to your purpose because that's a purpose problem. Um, and since we only have a few people and I know we're sort of reaching the I will 100% if you guys want to give me very specific questions. Um, Tiffany's an expert in this stuff too. Um, we can tackle those. What I'm going to do before we do that is I'm going to say goodbye to everybody on Facebook. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.